Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we're going to find out if we can use a 12 volt linear regulator instead of a buck converter to drive a 12 volt fan on a 24 volt 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to find out if we can drive a 12 volt fan using a linear voltage regulator such as the venerable LM7812 instead of using a buck converter. Why would you even want to use a 12 volt fan? Well, mostly to try reducing the amount of noise a 3D printer creates. And it seems that all the quiet fans are 12 volt fans. Noctua is one of the higher rated brands, but there are others such as Arctic. Now, unfortunately, these fans are often geared toward making PCs quiet and PC power supplies output 5 and 12 volts. So if we're going to use one of these fans on a 24 volt 3D printer, say for cooling the heat sink on the hot end, we're going to need to drop that 24 volts down to 12 volts. Now, previously I covered how to use a buck converter to do this. Buck converters are little circuit boards that take an input voltage and regulate it to a desired output voltage. Usually, buck converters have a little potentiometer on them and you turn that with a small screwdriver to set the output voltage right where you want it. And typically, you can set the output voltage to anywhere between 3 volts almost all the way up to whatever your input voltage is. The adjustability is nice. But in the comments of that video, Mickey the Fuzzbutt asked, does anyone know why no one isn't just using a simple LM7812 voltage regulator instead of a buck converter to do this mod? Now, my initial reaction was heat. In my experience, a 7812 voltage regulator can get pretty hot when it has to consume a steady diet of 24 volts while giving out only half that amount. The rest of that power essentially turns into heat. But Mickey says that the 7812 is only dissipating half a watt of power, so it shouldn't be a big deal, and that it could be mounted to the printer's case to use it as a heatsink. Mickey also says it should work fine without a heatsink, and in that configuration should only get up about 25 degrees C hotter than the surrounding air. Since the ambient temperature in the room here is about 20 degrees C, the 7812 without the heatsink is expected to reach somewhere in the vicinity of 50 degrees C. That's not hot enough to cause a serious burn, but it's still warmer than I'd want to touch for more than a few seconds. So I thought it'd be a good idea to see what happens when you use a 7812 instead of a buck converter. For about 12 bucks, I got a dozen heat sinks and 15 7812s from a large online retailer whose name I am apparently forbidden to mention, but which may or may not share the name of a rainforest located primarily in Brazil. I also grabbed a couple of buck converters that I had from the earlier video. I have this arguably huge one here, and I've got this postage stamp size one here. I had originally bought the large one for the buck converter video, and then I found the small one, so the smaller sized one is what actually made it into that video. Now, I've soldered some wires on the buck converters so I can plug them into a breadboard. And what I want to do is I want to run all these devices at the same time, and I want to measure how much heat they create. So here's what we're working with. A 7812 regulator with a heat sink, a 7812 regulator without a heat sink, a big buck converter set to 12 volts, and a stamp sized buck converter set to 12 volts. Each of these is driving a 12 volt 40 millimeter fan, and I'm powering all of this with a 24 volt Meanwell power supply. Now, I also put together a little Arduino project to take measurements from four thermistors so we can see how hot these things are getting. To test its accuracy in temperature measurement, I verified that it was reading close to room temperature on the four thermistors at, well, at room temperature, and it did. So then I set the bed of one of my 3D printers to 60 degrees C, taped the thermistors to the bed, and put a towel over it with a little weight on it to keep the heat in. I wanted to verify that they were reporting that temperature accurately too. And it measured 60 degrees C from all four thermistors once it was all heated up, so I'm calling it good. So here, on what may be the jankiest test rig ever, the thermistors are Kapton taped to the devices under test. The 7812 without the heatsink has the thermistor taped to the back of it. The 7812 with the heatsink has the thermistor taped to the heatsink itself. On the buck converters, I located the chip that's doing the work and taped the thermistors there. So let's turn the test rig on. Okay, it looks like we're getting about 20 degrees C, which is the room temperature, according to the idle printers elsewhere in the room. 
Then we'll turn on the 24 volt power supply and we'll watch the temperature readings while we hang out with the BB3D fan club. On the screen, you see readings for T1, T2, T3, and T4. These are the four thermistors. T1 is the 7812 with the heatsink. T2 is the 7812 without the heatsink. T3 is the big buck converter and T4 is the small buck converter. So right away, we can see that the 7812 regulators are starting to heat up pretty quick. The buck converters are warming up a little bit, but not nearly as quickly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is speed up the footage and we'll see what we're getting for temperatures after about 15 minutes. Wow, that's eye-opening. The 7812 with a heatsink is over 60 degrees C and the 7812 without a heatsink is over 90 degrees C. Those are both really hot. Now, meanwhile, the two buck converters stayed below the body temperature of your average human. The larger one was a little warmer than the smaller one. So, I don't think I want to use a 7812 regulator to get 12 volts to drive a fan. I mean, yeah, the small buck converters are a buck 20 a piece, while the 7812s are only 40 cents each. But without a heat sink, that 7812 got dangerously close to the boiling point of water. So, you either need to add a heat sink, bringing the cost of that 7812 up to 90 cents, or drill a hole in your printer's case to mount it so you can use the printer's case itself as the heat sink. So, depending on how you look at it, the cost difference between using a 7812 and a buck converter to drive a 12 volt fan on a 24 volt printer is between 30 and 80 cents. My personal preference is to spend the extra 80 cents to get the buck converter, and here's why. Power wise, the buck converters can handle up to 3 amps of power, while the 7812 regulators can only handle 1 amp. Now, for driving cooling fans, either of these will be fine. But convenience wise, the buck converters are a more general purpose device because they can be adjusted not only to 12 volts, but 5 volts and even down to 3 volts. At 5 volts and 3 amps, they are perfectly capable of powering a Raspberry Pi. So if you run Octoprint on a Pi and you wanted to use your printer's power supply to power it, you could do that. And that would be one less power brick plugged in near your printer. And heat wise, no question, buck converters win. So that's my take on it. Yes, you can use 7812s to get 12 volts, but they get pretty hot. If you have a bunch of 7812s in a parts bin somewhere and you just want to use them up, and you have a way to handle the heat, go for it. As for me, I'll stick with the buck converters, because buck converters are cool. Or at least they're about room temperature. I want to thank Mickey the Fuzzbutt for bringing this subject up. I was pretty sure the 7812s would run hotter than the buck converters, but honestly I didn't know how this would play out, or how hot the 7812s really got. Plus, this was a great opportunity to lash together a test rig and research how to connect thermistors to an UNO and write some code to monitor the temperatures and show them all at the same time on that little LCD screen. So I guess the takeaway from this experiment, apart from Brian likes buck converters, is this. Do not be afraid to question things. Now, by no means do I know all the answers, and I'm not an expert, but I do appreciate the occasional challenge, and I had a lot of fun thinking about how to test these devices. And now we have an answer to the question, heat. So with that, I think we're just about done. Thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any cool 3D printing stuff. If you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But either way, please share your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and you want to help out, check out the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the affiliate links really helps, and heck, even just subscribing is a great way to support the channel and help keep me making these videos for you. Well, now that we found our answer, I'm going to go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.